Good evening, and welcome to Hopkinton High School for tonight's varsity boys basketball game as the Medway Mustangs take on your hometown Hopkinton Hillers. The Tri-Valley League is committed to the highest ideals of sportsmanship and establishing a healthy environment for interscholastic competition. The league will not tolerate negative statements or actions directed towards competitors, game officials, coaches, or fans in attendance. Such actions include taunting, trash talking, and the berating of players, coaches, or officials. Please respect all decisions made by officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. Thank you for helping create a positive, respectful, and fun environment here at HHS. And now for tonight's lineups. For the Medway Mustangs, starting at guard, number 14, sophomore, Drew Plunkett. Starting at forward, number two, senior, Matt Fazolino. Starting at forward, number 15, senior, Christos Brooks. Starting at guard, number three, senior captain, Nick Assad. And starting at guard, number 11, senior captain, TJ Nelson. The Mustangs are coached by Jason Roji, assisted by Shane Jackson and Dan McMahon. And now for your hometown Hopkinton Hillers. Starting at guard, number 10, sophomore Tommy Ambersoni. Starting at guard, number 21, junior Michael Puvacad. Starting at forward, junior, number 24, Brendan Kelly. Starting at guard, number 32, junior, Ben McKenzie. And starting at forward, number 35, senior captain, Zach Sasitsky. The Hillers are managed by Cam Hutchinson. Head coach is Tom Keene and assisted by Chris Banks. Now would you all please rise for the playing of our national anthem. TV presents another edition of Varsity Basketball. This time, the Hiller boys host the Medway Mustangs. Hi, I'm Tim Halatic. Per usual, here with my partner Steve Spector. This time for the boys, though, yesterday we had a very exciting girls' victory with Lily Morningstar hitting the game winning shot. But tonight we have the boys who, this is their second meeting with Medway, um, and they lost in a lopsided fashion in Medway. They lost 69 to 45. Um, about a month and a couple of days ago. So now a chance for Hopkinton to set things right. Yeah, a little payback. And again, you mentioned a minute ago that the, what, a, what a night here last night. The right. girls just want to congratulate them. Tough tough uh, team from Foxborough, non-league game, and find out after the fact that Foxborough is ranked fifth in the state. Wow. So to knock them off was really, really big. And uh, hopefully we can get that matchup going again tonight with the boys uh, against Medway. And, they, and they, they owe them one after taking it right. on, <laughs> on the chin a little bit uh, in Medway last month. So. Should be a great game. Yep. The Hillers enter this game six and six overall, four and four in the TVL, and it seems like every game that we do for the boys, we talk about how much uh, their tournament hopes hinge on each game. And again, uh, Medway actually in the same situation with a five and six record overall. Definitely. So both this is playoffs are essentially starting right now. They every game means something. So. But the Hillers are doing all they can to make the postseason a reality. Winners of three in a row. And they oh, start nice this game play. with a turnover and two points. Ambersoni 
with the first bucket of the game off the turnover. Great. Call, quick timeout with 26 seconds into the game. And Coach wow. Roger cannot be happy with that at right. Medway. That's great. And, you know, Tommy Ambrosoni with a Euro step layup. Uh, he's, a, you know, lean and mean, long arms. And uh, he kept his body under control for a nice uh, layup to start the game. And then Hiller's really swarming on a full court press and, and double, double team situation right in front of the Medway coach. And Jason Roji, I guess his name Roje. is. Roje. Roje, thank you. Uh, didn't like that development. So interesting. You don't see t timeouts called 20 seconds into the game. Right. But I was about to say that's probably one of the last things you want. Um, a turnover in a bucket and then almost another turnover. And all of a sudden they're back on the bench getting talked to again. Yeah. So Not exactly what Coach Roje is looking for, like you were saying. But at any rate, uh, both teams are coming back out onto the floor now. We'll see if Medway is more equipped to handle this Hopkinton press. Yep. And that Medway, you know, starting starting four seniors and a sophomore. The Hiller starting one senior, Zach Tzitzki, and, and four underclassmen. So that's an interesting contrast. Medway still trying to break that press. Ambersoni and nice. McKenzie work together to force the steal. McKenzie thought about taking it all the way, kicks it back. Ambersoni over to Puvacad. Three up, no good. Assad with a nice rebound. Now taking it all the way, shot, nice no block. good. Drew Plunkett. Might have lost control of that one or it was blocked. But now Plunkett gets another chance. He takes the contact and one. Well, number three, uh, Nick Assad. Nice pass to his teammate, uh, Drew Plunkett, who really took the ball up strong, kind of knew that there was going to be contact, played off that, and uh, hit the nice shot. He's got a chance for a three-point play. And he completes it. 3-2 Medway with seven minutes left here in the first quarter. McKenzie, Ambersoni now, he launches the shot, no good, rebound to Assad. Nice that tip steal. pass results in a steal, McKenzie comes away with it, he brings it down the lane, knocked out of bounds, don't know how that ends up in Medway's possession. Kind of questionable, but. I didn't think it was a foul, but at the very least should be Hopkinton ball, at any rate, Medway takes over, up 3-2 still. Full court pressure by the Hillers. Shot from Brooks, no good. Szyzycki with the rebound. McKenzie was about to walk into a three, toss it back to Szyzycki. Ambersoni now drives, poke from behind. Nice play from Plunkett. Quick hands. And quick have. enough not to get the foul and still uh, force the uh, out of bounds. Yeah, that's a Kind of, kind of a whooping they took uh, earlier in the year by, by Medway right. um, by 25 points. So the Hillers uh, looking for a, re a little sweet revenge tonight. Although, to, to be fair to the Hillers, we have seen a different team. It, it feels like over the past three or four games, uh, as part of that three-game winning streak, I'm sure the team has improved markedly oh, since nice. that game against Medway, oh. and they're showing it here. A couple offensive rebounds have been no good on the shots for Brandon Kelly. Yeah, Brendan usually will get a little bit of momentum going on down low. Nice ball fake by Medway. Number two. Uh, Matt Fasolino. Matt Fasolino. And then nice meanwhile, play. on the other end, Szyzycki takes advantage. Nice lane to give Hopkinton the lead once again. That pass almost picked off by McKenzie. Yeah, Zach, to a large extent, he sets the tone for the Hillers uh, with his hustle and got the good sign to get, get him an early basket. Puvacad, tough D on Assad. He turns around, fires the off-bounce jumper. Offensive board nice for, for Medway, and a bucket comes courtesy of Matt Fasolino. It's tough. He actually boxed out Brendan, which is not an easy thing to do on that play. Ooh, almost a travel. Close. McKenzie stuck with the ball, looking for something. Him and Szyzycki Ten seconds on the shot Playing clock. catch. Gonna launch it. The three for Szyzycki, can't, nice play. can't say he's taken many of those. McKenzie with the rebound, his, his wide open three, no good, rebound to Plunkett. 5-4 Medway.
Plunkett, the nice pass over to Brooks now. He tries to drive baseline. He was pushed out of bounds. Foul goes against Hopkinton. Looks like on Puvacad, or I'm sorry, it's on Kelly, his first. Coach Keene uh, using his bench early here. Looks like Luke DeLoya and Ryan Kester coming in. A couple of juniors, a lot of juniors on the team. It's a good, good sign for next year. Ooh, almost, almost a travel there. Brooks ends up with the bucket. Medway extends his lead to three, up seven to four. Pretty sweet move there. Yeah, good move underneath by Brooks to get that A little up and under. Szyzycki comes off the screen. Asa comes over a bit late. Hit with the foul. Tough play by Zach taking it into the trees there. Medway has a few players around 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 6 down low, and I think Zach took, took the ball down into at least a couple of them mm -hmm. and uh, didn't have a whole lot of room. But... Uh, Drew the foul, he's got a chance for two shots here. First one off the front rim. 7-4 lead for Medway, 350 left here in the first quarter. Drew Rankatorian for the Hillers now. Sophomore. Yeah, Rankatori is uh, one of the guys who's really had an impact in this uh, three-game winning streak for Hopkinton. We'll see what he can do in his first minutes here tonight. Somehow getting the shot off is TJ Nelson. Eventually ball rolls out of bounds, stays with Medway. And Medway's taking it up strong to the hoop, looking for, you know, drawing fouls or whatever, but they're, they've got a good flow so far. They're up seven to four with three minutes and 37 seconds left in the first quarter. It's early. Assad launches the deep three. Just a bit short. Rebound to Amersoni. He finds Kester. Oh, Kester gets picked by Nelson. Now Medway on the break. Pass up to Brooks. He takes it. And a quick blocking foul call. This one goes against Szyzycki. And yeah, Medway's very aggressive to the hoop. Part, maybe part of the strategy for Coach, Coach Roger. I, I got to get that right. Rojay. Rojay, thank you. I'll get that eventually. Uh, it's first quarter. We got yeah, time. And it's, it's get all night here. First free throw good there for Brooks. Christos Brooks, senior, th six foot three. I don't think the, the Hillers have anyone six foot three on their roster that I'm aware of. We don't have the height right, here. Right, last, last year there were several several players over six three, six, six five. four, yep. six five. All those guys are gone now. Yep. Hopkinton has had to change its style of play. That's different ways to skin a cat, as they say. Right. Ambersoni drives. Clean strip there from Plunkett. Nice play defensively for Medway. Drew Plunkett, ball handler. They're doing a good job of running the offense there for Medway. Brooks drives, trips up a little bit. Ooh. Turnover, ball out. squirting around. Plunkett somehow gets his hands on it. His left hand layup too strong. Rebound to Johnston. Bodies flying everywhere out there, Tim. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of contact. Zizitsky, probably good, good fortune for on his part not getting his second foul because there was a potentially enough contact to warrant the, the foul on him. But the rest, to their credit, let, letting the boys play as they say, as much as they can. But the Hillers have four fouls to one to Medway so far. Shot no good for Medway. Rankatori with the rebound. Now Szyzycki has it. Cross court pass, McKenzie had an open three, turned it down. Rankatori, the free throw line jumper. Nice. Just trickles in, eight to six now, Medway. A nice touch, Rankatori. Hit the front of the rim. That's that's a shooter's touch for sure. Nice bounce pass down low. Layup no good. Johnson Ooh, with a rebound. Push <laughs> from behind. Lucky for Hopkinton. That somehow rimmed out. But two free throws coming for Johnston. Yeah, Ryan Johnston uh, 
kind of a lanky six foot three sophomore. Not a lot of bulk, but he got the rebound and was able to maneuver the shot. It yeah. almost went down. It's a surprise it didn't go down. It practically went in and out. First free throw good for Johnston. Has some substitutions for Hopkinton. Brandon Kelly, Michael Ionelli come back in. I believe it's Ionelli's first minutes of the game. Yep. Johnston one of two on that trip. Nine to six lead for Medway. Look out for the trap. Ionelli stuck in the corner, needs help. Oh, nice bounce. Oh, he was trying bad. to pass it to Kelly, I believe, but it hit the rim. Brooks wow. somehow with the off-balance layup. Tough play for Brooks. Athletic but it made it right happen. 11-6, Medway, early lead. McKenzie drives, tried to get it over to Kelly. Brooks was in front. Johnson almost oh, loses the hustle. ball. McKenzie wow. fighting for it, somehow got Unbelievable. it. To Deloya, he takes it. Nice shot. His layup somehow, tough finish, Luke Deloya. Great play from Deloya and McKenzie to make that happen. Oh, too bad. And then McKenzie a bit too aggressive right there, hit with the foul. That was amazing. And McKenzie, I don't know how he, A, made the, the steal, and then somehow con contorted his body to not go out of bounds and found Deloya, who made a heck of a shot down the lane, keeping the, keeping the game close. 11-8 you know, uh, Medway at the moment. Right, 120 left here in the first quarter. Medway initially struggled breaking that press, haven't had much trouble since. Asad drives. Gets pushed from behind. Should be two shots coming here for it's the un, senior. It's unfortunate Deloya got his, uh, he's got their feet kind of tangled up a little bit and to the credit of uh, is it Nick Assad? I can't. Yeah, it looks like number three, Nick Assad. I believe so. It's uh, he is shooting a free throw. It's one and one. It was not it was a foul. It was not a shooting foul. Shooting, yep. First free throw, no good. Oh, Rebound bouncing around. Hopkinton does grab it. Oh, Ionelli, nice. great pass to Kelly. And one. And one for Brendan Kelly. Nice job from Ionelli to find his teammate down. Miscommunication there on defense from Medway left Kelly wide open. Two easy points for Hopkinton, a chance for one more. Yeah, nice finish by Brendan, and again uses his body. He protected the ball with his body, and there was definitely some contact on the Medway player, and uh, chance for a three-point play, tie the ball game up. Seven fouls for Hopkinton here at this point. Only two for Medway, or against Medway. Ambersoni makes a tough wow. play. Easy. Big, big collision there. Somehow dribbling through all the Medway players. Almost takes it all the way. Wow. <laughs> Ambersoni. Two free throws coming for kinda, the sophomore. Kind of slashing his way through about four players. That was pretty, pretty impressive. Somehow drew the foul. Like I said earlier, he's got long arms. He's got good, good body control and uh, was able to get the shot off. Drew the foul. First free throw good for Ambersone. We have a tie game, 11-11, 48 and a half seconds left in the first quarter. The first time we see Jack Breslin here in this contest. Jack brings a lot of energy whenever he's in the game. Always ready to shoot. <laughs> he likes to shoot. <laughs> he shoots in his driveway all the time on Huckleberry Road, so the, I, can, I can vouch for that. He's been <laughs> shooting in his driveway for a, lot of t a long time, many years. Almost a turnover there yep. for Medway. Possession save. Nick Assad takes it all the way. A tough shot. No Forced good. It. And he tipped it out of bounds in an effort to get the rebound. Probably not the shot you want to see if you're Coach Rojay. Assad taking on the entire Hiller defense. Yeah, the one on five usually doesn't get the coach too happy, you know. <laughs> and, his, and his teammates were saying, hey, what about me? I'm over here <laughs> open on the, on the wing. So, but uh, A fortunate news for Hopkinton. About five seconds separating the game and shot clock. They can try to take the last second if they, last shot if they choose. Ambersoni thought about the three. He does launch it. Ooh, in and out. Ball bouncing around, no good. Rangatori fighting for the rebound. Nice. Pass inside to Kelly. Oh. Ionelli, another great play. Grabbed the loose ball, found his teammate Kelly. And almost another and one opportunity, but two free throws coming. 
for the junior. Yeah, Brendan again, a recipient of a nice pass, good hustle underneath. And uh, again, got whacked going up for the shot. Five seconds left in the quarter. Be nice to get a couple, couple freebies here. First one good for Kelly. Hopkinton takes the lead, 12-11. Five seconds left here in the first. Second shot incoming for Kelly. It is up and no good. No that foul. way with the board. Somehow Ionelli oh. gets in there, pokes the ball out, stays with Medway. Three seconds left for the Mustangs. I thought for a minute they called a foul, but that's good. 2.9 seconds, see if they can muster up a shot. Plunkett has a chance. Just short on the long three-point attempt. That leaves Hopkinton with a 12-11 lead after a pretty intense and tightly contested first quarter. Yeah, both teams, Tim, are fighting for playoff position or just to make the right. playoffs. And every game right now, as the season winds down, is critical, which means every foul shot is critical. <laughs> so the, it's good to see the, the Hillers getting a little momentum at the foul line. They're not hitting every one of them, but you know these free throws early can come back. We saw that last night in the girls' game when the the, 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 uh, the girls they were didn't really have their mojo at the free throw line early and put them you know put themselves in a situation where that they could have avoided. Right. And unfortunately, they came back and ended up winning uh, on a last second shot. But uh, tonight, the boys, uh, that's a pretty good, good start. Kind of both teams feeling each other out. And uh, I think it's a decent crowd here tonight. A lot of energy. Should be fun. Uh, hopefully, we get another fantastic finish like last night. Right. And after the first quarter, that's what things are pointing to as we see the girls there taking in the boys' game here tonight. Uh, Medway coming in off a three-game losing streak, losing to Dedham, Medfield, and Wellesley, while Hopkinton, like we mentioned before, has a three-game winning streak. So despite the kind of different paths these teams are on, playing each other very tight here today, only a one-point difference after the first eight minutes. We'll see what the second quarter can do to separate these teams. Medway out defensively and man-to-man. -man. Oh, Down nice. low to That's Ionelli. Tough shot for him. Awkward angle, almost looking up backwards at the hoop. Couldn't hit the layup. Ball out of bounds goes to the Mustangs. Yeah, nice entry pass by Szczynski. And uh, Ionelli, like, as you said, was had his back to the hoop. Kind of a tough shot with that angle. And then Kelly uh, tried to keep it in, but couldn't do that. Medway breaks the press once again. Seem to have that down pat after the first two possessions. Good deed by the Hillers. Really digging down deep. Good D. Playing with the feet. Shot fired from Nelson. Three is just a bit short. Ionelli grabs it up to oh. Breslin. He couldn't get the shot off. Ball goes out of bounds. Stays with the Hillers. Breslin launches the quick three oh. off the pass, knocks it down. It's a good sign, Jack. Bringing some energy to the, the Hiller uh, offense and defense. Brooks drives baseline, tries the tight pass to Matt Fasolino, couldn't handle it. Tough play, turnover for Medway. A little too much juice on that pass there. I don't think the, his teammate was ready, ready for that. 15-11 Hillers after being down, so it's quite a, quite a turnaround. Breslin launches another three off Feeling the pass. It. No good. Grab by Plunkett. He takes it the whole way. Nothing. Tough shot. Kind of forced that one again. Yeah, a little out of control. Grab by Breslin. He decides to take it all the way and was fouled on the dish to Szczynski. Breslin coming in. Only for only been in there for about a minute and a half. But coming in there with a lot of fire to start. TJ Nelson, the captain of Medway, trying to play defense with his feet, but Breslin's too quick for that and kind of was blown by him. And uh, oh there you go. Oh had had Breslin does receive the inbounds pass. Amber Sony tried a crossover, tripped over Medway defender's feet. 
Plunkett takes it the whole way, runs over Ainelli. Ainelli charged with the block. And one coming for Medway. Opportunity. Wow. Tough shot. Ainelli coming out. And McKenzie back in. Those are tough calls. The defensive players, even though he didn't quite get set, the offensive player clearly initiated the contact. So kind of, kind of need to call one or the other. Right. And I guess the, the rule of thumb is if the feet aren't set, that's going to be on the, the defensive player. Ambersoni, nice cut, gets the pass Tough from shot. Lynn. His layup, no good, grabbed by Plunkett. 15-13 lead for Hopkinton. Six minutes left here in the half. Nelson drives, go. picked away. Lind comes up with the loose ball. Good decision to hold the ball up, get organized. Six minutes uh, left in the half, 15-13 Hillers. McKenzie with it, almost stripped by Nelson. Medway has ratcheted up the defense in the past Need some help. couple possessions. Three Five seconds. seconds left on the shot clock. Tough call there goes against Medway with about with exactly five seconds left on the shot clock. Brooks hit with a reach and foul. Christos Brooks, senior forward. We're not getting the uh, the, the fouls uh, on right, our scoreboard, the updates. so we'll have to talk to Coach Bliss about that in, in between <laughs> uh, halves. See if we can get that for us. But uh, I think that was Christos' second foul. Can't, can't confirm that at the moment, but oh, there, look at that pass. Great pass mm. to Szczytski. Play worked. Szczytski wasn't quite ready for it. Lost track of it. Knocked it out of bounds. Ball goes to the Medway. Trying to thread the needle on that. There wasn't a whole lot of room to do that, but good idea. Double team. That's and a, a wayward pass there. Almost a turnover from Medway. Almost another one, but somehow Plunkett ends up with it. Brooks drives baseline. He was hit. No contact, no foul. And wrestling, wrestling. The, ball, nice. the ball away is Breslin. Easy. Now over to Zizitsky. He takes it the whole way. Lefty layup, no good. Plunkett takes it the whole way for Medway. He's fouled on the lefty layup. No good on the shot. Two free throws coming. Up and down. These boys are playing, man. A lot of energy up and down. Too bad Zach uh, couldn't finish that lefty layup. It was a good good opportunity to get a hoop. They hadn't had one in a little bit, so. Drew Plunkett, sophomore guard, five foot nine. At the line. Yeah, played quarterback for Medway as well. Oh, he's Out here, guiding the, uh, yep, yeah, he played quarterback for Medway. Now he's a uh, floor general here for oh, Medway yeah. as well. Got that kind of makeup, huh? You <laughs> can point guard and a quarterback. You can kind of they go together almost, you know. Right, same general decision making, leading the team, and Plunkett seems to have done a good job of both, leading Medway to a tie game right here at 15-15, 5:02 left in the first half. Got a one and one here. Yes, yeah, Luke Deloya drew the foul. Bit closer disparity in fouls now. Hopkinton at nine, Medway at seven. One and one coming for Deloya. There you go. First one goes right through the net, 16-15. He has a good pace about him. He, well, he's taking his time. He's got a routine down. Same, same routine every time. Second one, no good. Rebound to Johnston. Plunk his pass. A little miscommunication there from his Mustang teammates. Nice play by the Hiller girls down there. Uh, taking one, I don't know, maybe off to someone's forehead. <laughs> Looks like everyone's going to be okay, but solid pass right to someone's forehead down there. Deloya drives, hit poke oh. from behind. Could be two shots or? Should be at least one if they called it on the floor. Deloya, let's see if he can get, get a couple freebies oh. here. No, he, he is signaling two as it was uh, on the shot for Deloya. Aggressive play earning him some free throws here. 
Too bad. Oh, I guess it was a one and one. Yep. Three fired from Kester. He wow. knocks it down. Ryan Kester, that's that's a big hoop. 432 left. Hillers by four points now. Wow. Plunkett somehow dribbles it through a double team, but then a lazy bounce pass is stolen away. Szyzycki takes nice. it all the way. Right, right hand layup for the lefty. No second thoughts for Szyzycki there. He knew he was taking it all the way. Assad drives. Nice, nice bounce nice pass dish. to Fasolino. Nice wraparound. Great court vision from Assad. Deloya drives. He's picked by Brooks. And picked Somehow back. takes takes back the loose ball. Kester is picked. He recovers it. Kester loses the ball again. This time it's off a side. Now Kelly will enter back in for Hopkinton. And Stephen Maffiori will get his first minutes here in the contest. Oh, he's out of bounds. Puvacad yep. had no choice, had to throw the ball in. Stolen away by Plunkett, but he landed out of bounds. So it stays with Hopkinton. Referee's discussing something over there. He's calling a foul or something. Not sure if it's a foul or. Not really sure what that discussion's about, but looked just like a Medway player stole the ball as, as he was coming down, landed on the on the sideline there. So. Well, at any rate, Hopkinton will inbound. Kester turns and launches a three, but a travel before he launched the shot. Yeah, Turnover there for Hopkinton. I mean, Kester, he just hit one from over there uh, about a minute and a half ago, so he was starting to feel it. Had a little pitter-patter feet as he was getting positioned to, to launch it. 3.30 left here in the first half. Four-point lead oh, for Hopkinton. Wow. Brooks takes it down the lane. Two-point game now. Opuvakad. Bad pass there right into the hands of Plunkett. Assad for three. And a lead now for Medway, 22-21. Just oh. like that, a five-point swing. She's in about 10 seconds, five points. Hillers need to get Kubica a little bit more to organized. Deloya. That's a, He's pushed from behind. And more free throws coming for Deloya. Multiple substitutions now. Yeah, it's a game of streaks, as we talk about often. Medway in the middle of a little bit of a run. See if the Hillers can uh, answer it. And no good on the free throw for Deloya. That's too bad. He's, he's been at the free throw three, three times. He's been, yeah, been aggressive. Yep. Has earned those free throws. Hasn't been able to make them count. Plunkett stuck in the corner. Eventually finds help. Pass inside to Assad. Oh. So contact and a foul called. It's going to be a tenth foul, so we got double bonus right now. It's on Deloya. He's getting, getting a lot of playing time, doing a good job. He's asking the ref what he, what he did to deserve that foul. I'm not sure if he got a straight answer, but. <laughs> <laughs> he did get a foul, that much we know. He probably got some answer. He's still talking to the ref, but. Oh, yeah. Ref is asking him to sit down. Take five, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, he avoids the technical, so. Yeah. We don't know exactly what they were saying, but didn't seem to be too mean-spirited. As Medway has a two-point lead after the free throw from Assad, 23-21. to 21. Pass inside to Kelly. And Fasolino ties him up. 
Jump ball. This one goes to the Mustangs. Nice play defensively for Fasolino. Yeah, Kelly's, you know, tough underneath. But unfortunately for him, he brought the ball down, and um, the Medway player got a hold of it. A nice save by the Medway player there. Yeah, Plunkett, a good job there of keeping the ball in bounds, saving the possession. Tough D by the Hillers. Plunky calling out Ooh, signals now. Looking for help, finds Johnston. Assad's, or Fasolino's open under the hoop. Pass to a cutting Plunkett. He's fouled as he tried to get the shot up. Should be some more free throws coming for Medway. Yep, it on Kelly. That might be his second. Again, we're gonna have to try to get that information at halftime on the foul situation. That's a double bonus. Two shots anyway for the shooting foul. Plunkett short on the first. Neither team has been too great from the free throw stripe here today. Missed opportunity. Especially in a close game like this one. Medway up after that make there from Plunkett. Up 23 to 21. 24 to 21. Just under two minutes left in the half. Nice bounce pass to a cutting Szczynski. Nice. His layup is good. Ionelli doing a great job of facilitating here today for the Hillers. Nice, nice cut by Zach. Nice delivery and nice finish. Plunkett in trouble. Pass inside to Fasolino. An offensive foul call. <laughs> Fasolino not happy with the call. And I got to say, I don't. I kind of agree. It seemed more like a no call more than anything, but good for the Hillers. Yeah, I would have to agree with you there. It was an unusual looking uh, Great. contact yeah. that didn't, didn't look like a, anything very obvious. Incidental contact, yeah. if anything. But like I said, fortunate for the Hillers. Down one, 120 left here in this first half. Three, step up three by Amersoni. Oh, no out. good. That would have been a sweet three at that moment. Assad takes the jumper. Among bodies, knocks it down. Tough shot. Szczynski down low, gets the pass. No, got the shot he wanted. No good, though. A yeah, quick foul called. This one looks like going against Tom Leone, who went getting his first action of the game. Got called for a hold. And more free throws coming for Medway. Yeah, 26-23, one minute left exactly. Both teams in a double bonus. Finished out this last minute, so we could be... Here for a while. It could be <laughs> 10 minutes to play this next <laughs> minute and a half. But, but Medway really um, should be up by more than three right now. Really haven't taken advantage of their uh, trips to the free throw line, especially in this last, uh, like we were saying, this last minute or two. They've been up there like six to eight times and have only come away with yeah. about three points. Hillers are similar. They're no 0 for 2, two on that trip. And then to compound it, a foul called, I believe, on number 14. Uh, yeah, it looks like on Plunkett. Good box out by Zach. And no free throws on that, though, because it was a... Offensive. Like right, yeah, yeah, it was technically an offensive foul on Medway. Got some room. Ambersoni, nice pass down low. Blocked. Good, good battle. Leone was blocked, but then fighting for the rebound, drew a foul, so it looks like he will be shooting two. The senior. Ryan Johnston, the six foot three forward, sophomore, kind of got tangled up with Leone on that play. And Leone stuck with it. He missed his first shot, but he, to his credit, he. Oh, nice. <laughs> A war ball right yeah, there. Somehow right. hit the perfect spot on the, on the uh, rim and dropped right down. Beautiful. Still counts. Did they? Absolutely. Second one, one got away. Second one didn't just uh, nick the backboard. 40 seconds left here in the first half. About a 16 second difference between the game and shot clock. Hopkinton should get the possession back. Drive baseline, layup, no good. And Leone, great job boxing out. Force a foul from Jack Hadigan over the back. Looks like we'll be shooting again. Hopefully Tommy can 
adjust, make a couple of adjustments and pick up a couple free throws here. Tie things up. 26 seconds left in the half. Hopkinton down two with free throws incoming from the senior captain. First one off to the right a bit, no good. Could bend his knees a little bit and help. But that's, a, that's something to work on in practice, not, not in the right. middle of the game. But need, need a little focus and just drop one in here. There we go. Oh, No good, but he fights for the rebound. But a quick foul called. Well, as I said, it could take a long time to get through this last minute <laughs> yeah, of the you're half. You're not kidding. We got uh, double bone. We're going to have to definitely check the foul situation out. There's a whole lot of fouls in this first half. So not sure if anyone has three fouls, but I, I think there's a, a handful that have two on both teams. Johnson's wow. <laughs> first, first free throw somehow rims out. I, I don't know what the shooting percentage is at the line, but I'm it guessing it's below 50% <laughs> for both teams, which is not making their respective coaches too happy. <laughs> I would imagine Johnson gets that one to drop as Kester comes back in for Hopkinton, replacing Ionelli. 25 seconds left. Shot clock is off. Hopkinton down 27-24. A foul will give them two free throws. They can take the last shot if they want. Amersoni taking his time, waiting for the right play to open up. Ten Looks seconds. like they're trying to get Kester open for three. They do. He turns. Oh. And Zizitsky hit with the travel. Little Tough break there. Little pat, not, a, not as much of a sense of urgency by the Hillers there. Just kind of a passive play with that kind of point in the game. Plunkett takes it the whole way. Scoop layup, no good. And Medway, despite the poor foul shooting, takes a three-point lead up 27-24 into the halftime break. Yeah, good, good, you know, good half for both teams. It looks like it's going to be a tight game. And you know, these free throws, boy, I tell you what, I mean, I, they must be, you know, eight or ten free throws missed by each team. And I'm just estimating at that point. Don't quote me on that, but right. but I think um, you know I I think the, the coaches need to focus on that a little bit, and I think the the foul situation is going to be very interesting interesting to see what happens. Uh, we're going to go down and check out that situation, and right. when we come back in the second half, we hope to have a little foul uh, data for everyone. But in the meantime, we got the band playing. Right. I wanted to make a comment. The band, those guys are pretty good. I'm a musician uh, in my spare time. <laughs> And that, that rendition of the Star Spangled Banner earlier was one of the best I've heard in a long time. So uh, anyway, we're here, we're here for the half, and we want to make sure we cover the, the uh, people making it happen. You want to take care yeah, of that? Yeah, our crew here tonight directing Tom Dings and graphics Samantha Dings. And on cameras, John Ritz, Mary Arnott, and our fearless leader, Mike Terosian. Uh, we thank you guys for helping make this happen. And we hope everybody here watching will join us here for the second half in a few minutes.
and we are back here in Hopkinton getting ready to start a second half between the Hiller boys and the Medway Mustangs. At three points just separating these teams right now at halftime, 27-24 lead for Medway. But it could be a, a pretty sizable advantage for either team right now, but they haven't been able to hit from the charity strike. Well, I was just down at the scores table for doing my extensive research in between halves, which is very limited actually. And I had a quick chat with Coach Dick Bliss, and he's he's not happy with either team's free throw shooting. It's you know we didn't we didn't really get the exact total, but just looking at the book, both teams look like they're under 50 percent from the from the free throw line, and that's right. really unacceptable at the high school level. Um, and, and the other thing that's going on is both teams have had a lot of fouls in the first half. So right. uh, the Hillers, Luke Deloya, and also Ben McKenzie with three fouls going into the second half. So uh, and then and then Brendan Kelly as well as um, sorry Luke Deloya. I'm sorry Tom, Tom Leone have two, and then there's four players on Medway with two fouls each. So. I don't so know if plenty to go around. I don't know if gonna, everyone's going to last in this game. There's a lot of fouls. So, well, if they do get fouled, we just hope that they shoot better from the free throw line. As Apuvakad's pass goes off the leg of Brooks, tough bounce for the ref. He's trying to get the ball somehow went underneath the stands, and he's not happy about bending over for that ball. <laughs> right, absolutely, <laughs> something that our audience could not see but I thought I'd share that with you. Medway playing his zone right now to start things off. Missed three, rebounded by Puvakad. McKenzie thought about a three. Now over to Szczytski. He turns oh, down bad. a three. Ball poked from behind. Brooks comes up with it but then Szczytski right back for the loose ball. He misses a shot. Kelly down low. Wow. Offensive board and two points. Full court pressure by the Hillers. See what Medbury does with that. Oh, almost a travel. Very close. Assad and Nelson working together to get it past half court. Assad, couple Watch steps it. behind the three point line. Long three, rebounded by Kelly. That was uh, almost in another town. That was way out. That was beyond pro, pro three McKenzie point. McKenzie drives. Good defense from Assad. Unfortunately for Assad, ball ricochets off his face when he's out of bounds. Ball goes to Hopkinton. That might have been the deepest three-pointer I've seen this year, uh, ex excluding like a end of a quarter right, or a right. half shot. That was really launched. Amber Sony thought about the three. Puvakai drives. Nice play. Takes the contact. Foul. No uh, shot. No good. But two free throws coming. T.J. Nelson, number eleven. Not really. Agreeing with that call, has his palms facing the ceiling. Like, what? How could that be, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Referee? But I guess uh, there was contact, and Pulikad has got two two freebies. A good sign. He knocks down the first one. 27-27 now. Small 3-0 run here to start the third quarter for Hopkinson. Nice. Make that four nothing run. Well, that's a good sign, and uh, Pulikad's really. Smooth shooter, he can get he can get hot, get into the zone and side dribbles through oh, the nice. press. Beauty. Ambersoni steals it away. Deloya now over to Apubacad. He's stripped away by Nelson. No foul called on that one, but Nelson corrals the ball out of bounds. Stays with the Hillers. Deloya tries to go over Assad to Kelly. Assad. Ready for that one, steals it away. He finds his teammate in the corner, Plunkett for three. No good. Vaselino wrapped up with, looks like Ambersoni down there. A jump ball called. The yeah, Hillers are, uh, get the, it, have the first. Just, sorry, just yeah, another ahead. one of our sure. cameramen making a play. Hey, you know, John double Rich duty. Showing some quickness down there, John. I mean, that's, that's impressive, man. Uh, he doesn't have his headset on. There oh, he goes. What, what I just said, Give I have to props. repeat myself. Uh, that was some really, some serious quickness by John Ritz down there, covering the, the camera and lunging for the ball to keep the game going. So thanks, John, for that. Six minutes left in the third quarter. One-point lead for the Hillers. 
Facade drives, turns it back to Nelson. Probably could have been a travel. Whoa, that's a lot of walk in there. <laughs> Pass picked off, but stolen back by uh, Plunkett. Now leads to a three for Nick Assad. Launched it. Somehow that turns into three points for Medway. What a play. Great catch from Brendan Kelly. He's able to corral the pass. It was a bit out of reach, but he managed to uh, grab it and collect himself for the lay-in. Puvikad, nice pass. Didn't have a whole lot of room to connect that pass, but Brendan made a nice play gathering the ball and himself to get that, that bucket underneath. A side drives. Shot can't fall. Deloya with the rebound. Deloya running right down the lane to Kelly. Another bucket for Kelly. The big man making things happen for Hopkinton's yeah. offense. Good to see him getting in a little, little bit of a rhythm. And a turnover there, Assad jumping up in the air, trying to get the tough bounce pass to Fasolino. He couldn't handle it. Turnover there for the Mustangs. Yeah, I thought the Medway coach might call a timeout there, but he decided to let, let him play. The Hillers clearly have some momentum. Almost a walk. Puvakad, the jumper, no good. Kelly, another offensive board. He thought about muscling it up, pass it back out. Offense a little stagnant right now for Hopkinton. Not much movement going on. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Puvakad oh, nice. fakes the pass. Lefty layup, no good. Kelly fighting for it. Almost steals it away. And Medway comes up with the loose ball. Brooks pushes off. No foul called. Misses the wild shot. Oh, boy. And then Puvakad with just a bad idea for a pass. Stolen away by Medway. Yeah, a little mis misconnection there. Nice pass the, the, one, the time before right. for Puvakad, but that one was, didn't, didn't appear to be available. Oh. Szyzycki a bit too aggressive on the reach there. Plunkett draws the foul. So fortunately for Zach, he, he got an early foul on the game, and that's only his second. If my statistics are accurate. <laughs> Kelly and Puvakad. Subbed out. They take a well-earned rest as Kester and Ionelli come back out on the floor. Nice. Deloya reads that pass, steals it. He's looking to take it all the way. Dips it off to his teammate. Oh. Kester can't finish. Jump ball. Unfortunate. Had the bunny there for the layup and maybe just thought about it too much. Maybe was anticipating more contact that didn't really come. So... I know it was, uh, there were two uh, Hiller players kind of right in position to get collect that pass. That might have had something to do with it as well. As the tough three fired from Kester. They say Medway got a piece of it. Stays with Hopkinton. Kester not shy. He hit that early three-pointer early, early in the game and uh, why not? Oh, that's. And Ionelli's blocked from behind. Hopkinton stays with it again. 21 seconds left on the shot clock. And there's only 3.28 left here in the third quarter. Kester, oh, his bad. short bunny, no good. Nice. A, a uh, pretty big difference in, uh, I guess, overall time as opposed to game time here. This court is kind of flying by as opposed to, the, especially the uh, end of the second half, uh, end of the first half. No question about it. And I think the, the, the lack of fouls this half is, is uh, contributing factor to that. Absolutely. There's only been two fouls called this whole half right? with three minutes or so left in the third quarter. By by this time in the first half, there was, you know. Probably like four or five apiece, I think. Absolutely. So um, I think the coaches probably talked to them about free throw shooting and to gather and yourself and watch reaching, your fouls because yep. you, half the teams won't, would be available to play in the fourth quarter if they kept that pace up. Right now, Hiller is holding on to a two-point lead. Both, both teams need this W. Oh, too bad. Assad reads the pass, steals it away, oh. misses the layup. McKenzie 
Plunkett there tried to seal it away, forced McKenzie to pick it up, and he is hit with a travel. So a chance for Hopkinson to take advantage of that Mississaud layup given away on the turnover. Yep, timeout. Good timeout by Coach Keene to, you know, set up a, maybe a press or something, but a lot of up and down. It was the, the Hillers uh, having their way this, this uh, third quarter. They were down by three going uh, into halftime, and now they have a two-point lead. Asad would love to have that layup back. Right. He had all <laughs> sorts of time, and For he was sure. look, looking back. At, and he needed to focus on the, the shot that he had in front of him that was wide open, but he was concerned with whoever was coming up from the backside. Mm -hmm. But right now, the you know, the both teams trying to figure out a formula to take take this game, and I, I think it's going to be another, another close game at the end. Yeah, I think so. I mean... Uh, these teams show no no sign of either one pulling away. Um, anytime a little run starts, it's a stop by the other team. They only typically get to about five to seven points for each team, and then whoever Hopkins or Medway will come roaring back to tie it. And now after the timeout, we'll see what Coach Keen had to say to his guys. Hopkinton, I believe, will... We'll be on defense after this one. Yep, Medway will inbound. It's like a full court box and one, or kind of a box two one two. McKenzie almost picked that pass off. No foul. Ionelli oh. again caught reaching. Quick foul call. It's all right. Medway will inbound. Brooks gets it into Plunkett, 240 left here in the third quarter. Two point lead for the Hillers. Coach Keen using different players on uh, Drew Plunkett, the point guard. Right now Ionelli working him, shutting him down too. Good D, 10 seconds left yeah, in the shot not clock. Not much offense going on for Medway right here. No good looks, Brooks drives. Four seconds. Pass. Three seconds left on the shot clock. Pass to Assad. That's Short. And a shot clock violation is called. Could have let that one go, but at any rate, ball ends up with the Hillers. Great defensive sequence right there. Yeah, Got to love the, the Hiller bench all up on their feet. That's the kind of stuff you work on in practice in the preseason and get in shape and just playing, you know, tough D, and uh, they got the turnover off that. Ball into Kelly down low. His shot no good. McKenzie nice. gets oh. a hand up on that ball. Trips couldn't complete the steal, but a great defensive play nonetheless. And Coach OJ quick to call a timeout of his own. 145 left here in the third quarter. 32-30. Gee, Medway, you know, they had a 27-24 point lead at the at the half. They've got three points with only a minute 45 left in the third quarter. So they've got three points this quarter. Um, there was a flurry of scoring earlier in the quarter by the Hillers, and then things have... Really, really settled. Yeah, the settled offense is uh, kind of taking a back seat here, especially in, that, in the earlier part of this third quarter, like you were saying. Only three points for Medway, only eight for the Hillers. No team has been playing particularly well offensively. A lot of indecision, a lot of holding the ball late. Shots in the shot clock. We saw Hopkinton force that um, the violation there, the shot clock violation. So teams looking a little tentative right now, but someone's going to have to pick it up eventually to take this game home. Yeah, and it doesn't look like there's going to be a, a, a tale of two cities that have a tale of two halves here, right? Right. With the foul situation, because um, it doesn't look like there's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation right, for it really a while, slowed down. If, if at all, if they keep this pace up, which uh, which means the game will go a little bit. More, with a little more fluid. Although a few timeouts, the coach is trying to lengthen this one out. But after the midway timeout, the Mustangs inbound, down two. Tough, tough D. Five seconds. And a travel called Plunkett trying to get away from Ionelli. Ionelli with a tough D. Again, getting the Hiller bench up off their feet. That was Ionelli who just coming out of the game just to shut Kelly down. Uh, Kelly, you know, having a good game, but he, he he dribbled twice, picked up his dribble, and he got stuck. And then the rest of the Hiller defense didn't let any any passing lanes get open. So 
That was a team, team, team effort to get that turnover. Szczynski over to McKenzie, the open three. Nice. He knocks it down. McKenzie's first three of the day. That's a big one. Opens up a five-point lead for the Hillers. Oh, Pass nice down sack. low. Stolen away. Easy. Hattigan did not look, and the ball was taken away. Somehow Szczynski ends up with a loose ball. Kelly with it down low. Kicks it over to Breslin. He takes the deep two. No good. Rebound to Johnson, but poked away by Amber Sony. And a foul called. It looks like it should be against Medway. I think he called it on 24 for Medway, which he's... Right, he did. I, Ryan Johnston. Looks like he pointed the wrong way. That's a tough yeah, call. Yeah, he did, he did point the wrong way. That's what I, I was, I was a, bit a bit confused there, but the foul did go against Medway. That was just a tough, tough call to, to get that one right. It's just a lot of bodies flying around. McKenzie drives. Tough take. Passes it away to Kelly. Kelly in trouble. Breslin now. He turns around, fires the jumper. Too strong. Oh, and then bad. Kelly hit with an over the back. He knew it right away. And that's too bad with uh, 38 seconds left in the quarter. That's... Kelly's third foul. It is, it is his third. All right. Yep. Something to monitor there for the final quarter. He'll have two, two to spare. Here he comes out just to make sure he doesn't get his fourth. Rankatori comes in for the final 40 seconds. Boy, 11 to 3 quarter for the Hillers. That really good effort. Yeah. Five point lead now for Hopkinton. Eight seconds separating the shot and game clock. 15 left on the shot clock. Plunk it. Yeah, it looked like it traveled. Brooks fires the three. A bit strong. <laughs> Ball rolling around. Lots of bodies on the floor. Plunk it somehow gets it up to his teammate. Layup up and in from John Cole and Tony. Drew Plunkett absolutely mugged one of the Hiller players. Just tackled him from behind. Amber Sony drives. Three seconds left. Knocks it down. The buzzer beater. Probably could have been an and one opportunity for Amber Sony. At any rate, two, po two more points for the Hillers, and they take a 37-32 lead into the final quarter. Wow, that was a very physical quarter. And as I started to say... Yeah, it looks like we have to hand it over to oh, the floor. Sure. 50-50 raffle. The number is 8024234. Eight zero <laughs> two four two three four. You can get money at the table over there. Looks like one of the Medway JV players <laughs> won that raffle. Oh, oh, it's a it's a parent or something, but oh maybe, oh, maybe not. No, it's a it's a Hoppington parent. So there we go. That's good news. <laughs> we, we we like both towns, but if we had to choose, we'd probably at the home game we would probably want the home team parents to. Uh, I to I am from Medway. I wouldn't be opposed oh, okay. to one of them All taking right. home the money. M maybe myself, All you right. know. But again, I, I, I'm yet to, I've yet to win any of these things. <laughs> I feel like every time we're up here saying the same thing. Yep. Maybe something needs to change. Yeah, maybe we should buy a ticket. Maybe that's what <laughs> that'll help. <laughs> I always thought people did it on our behalf, but. Now All right, we, yeah. last quarter. Getting ready to go. for the final eight minutes. Should be a great game, great finish, like you were saying, Steve. One of the biggest leads of the game. Five-point lead for Hopkinton. Nice sack. Now Zizitsky has a chance to make it seven. He does the steal play. and the layup. Easy two points for Hopkinton. I mean, Zach's got some wheels. He was flying down the court there. Plunkett uses that hand to ward off the defender a lot. There's been a few times he could have been called for a push-off. Something definitely to look for. Another one that could have been called oh. really right there. Brooks drives, runs right over Ambersoni, pulls back for the nice step back. That was a nice shot. He's going full tilt and stop and pop and actually went backwards on that, make it a fadeaway after going full, full tilt forward. It's nice to be young and have those kinds of springs in your legs, you know? Amber Sony brings it back out, reset the offense. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. 
McKenzie fires the three right from where he hit his first. No good. Ambersoni grabs it. Uh oh. And Lynn tried to save it. Eventually, McKenzie falls on it. And they called a backcourt back violation. Yeah, I don't think the Medway player had touched it yet until it got to the backcourt. So, Coach Keene's looking for an right, explanation. That is true. Yep. I just gave him my best, <laughs> best guess best at the explanation. Best interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> Good D by the Hillers. Great pass from Assad Brooks. Nice almost dunked it in off the nice pass. 39-36. Brooks has got some hops. Six, he's already six foot three, and he's got some definitely some springs going there. Nice play by the Medway on that. There you go. McKenzie drives, almost finished the tough lay, and gets fouled from behind by Assad. That should be Assad's third foul, if these stats are to be trusted. But I have no reason to not trust them, so third foul it is. So what you're saying is I got, I got these stats at halftime, and you're not trusting me? Is that what you're saying? Hey, sources say. Oh. <laughs> That's good. Uh, McKenzie with a big free throw. Bringing Brendan back in. He's got three. Got to keep an eye on that. Oh, there's a good sign there. Two for two for McKenzie there. Five-point lead again for Hopkinton. Six minutes left. Nelson's bounce pass oh. somehow ends up back in his hands and then slapped out of bounds by Deloya. Boy, there's not a whole lot of room on that sideline. No. It's like dribbling in a phone booth or something. He's, I was no surprised he got up there to begin with, and then know. he tried the bounce pass and then somehow got it back. I mean, there was no room to get that ball. It was bouncing around like a pinball machine. Whoa. Drew Plunkett, he said he's a, he's a football player. He's mm -hmm. playing a very physical game. Right, hasn't been called for any... Anything yet, definitely slapping away hands as he comes off picks, trying to push off defenders. Nothing's been called. Hopkinton players have noticed it. I've seen nice. that. Four seconds on the shot clock. I don't Nelson think with it in the corner. He calls a timeout. They call the timeout with about one or two seconds left. It's probably one second, which is not a very good place to be. Right, tough Maybe. break there for Medway, but they do save the possession. Might be two seconds. But it's yeah, Coach Roger trying to get as much time as he can, lobbying. It can't be more than two seconds, I don't think, so we'll have to see what the refs decide to put on the clock. Right, and they don't have the benefit. Again, we talk about this a lot, but they don't have the benefit of looking at the uh, Jumbotron or any type of thing to look where exactly where those rules are made for to help for things like this, and they can't. It puts them in a tough spot. Well, that's a that's another tough timeout. It's it's tough to get a shot off with one second left on the shot right, clock. So it looks like that's what they decided one second for uh, yep. for Medway there. But you're right. Yeah, it's um, not easy for pro professional players to get a shot off in one second, much less high schoolers. We'll see what Coach Roger draws up. We'll see how Coach Keen plans to counter that. Yeah, Scotty Mack, and uh, see there in our, in our monitor. Had a nice write-up in the Metro West Daily News uh, the yeah, other day. Yeah, please check it out. And uh, he's a nice coach, one, kind of a Hoppington legend. Been right. in town for many years and highly regarded in many circles here. He's always at the games, bringing his uh, spirit and good luck. So hopefully that will rub off on the Hillers to finish this game off well, tonight. I'm, hey, uh, just to uh, put a uh, shameless plug in there, I actually work for the Metro West Daily News myself, so please do check that story out. Okay. A lot of times we cover Hoppington events too. Assad on that shot, a bit short, and it ends up being a shot clock violation anyway. Easy. Deloya, tough pass there to Kelly. Now he gets the ball back over to Ambersoni for a three in the corner. Oh, just a bit strong. Ball tipped out, rebounded by Kester. Now Hawkinson, a fresh shot clock, up five. Deloya with it up at the top of the key. Ten seconds left now. Kester driving, blocked by Assad. Nice defensive play. 
Saad, he's, he's got some size. He's 6'2". Kind of feels bigger than I was down on the court. Those guys, they say 6'3". feels like 6'6 six, six to me. <laughs> Seven seconds left for Hopkinton to get a shot off. Sazitsky trying to get it into McKenzie. Second ticks off the shot clock there. Still Hopkinton ball. Medway playing really scrap. Both teams playing scrappy defense, but Medway needs a stop right now. They, they haven't exactly, uh, oh, there you go. Kelly somehow gets open for a nice layup. Two more points for Kelly, 43-36 lead. And then on the other end, Fasolino ends Time up out. wide open. And Coach Keene not happy, calling a timeout. Defensive miscommunication there for Hopkinton. Well, that's too bad after such a nice play uh, to Brendan for the easy two. Easy two because Brendan uses his body so well underneath and creates the space to get those shots off. All the younger players who see that, they can make a note of that. Um, and then, unfortunately, the Hillers didn't get back on defense uh, quickly enough and led to a really easy bucket Medway for Medway. Medway took advantage. And um, Coach Keene didn't like that, so he called a quick timeout with just under five minutes left to go and five-point lead for the Hillers. And uh, we haven't talked too much trash, but, you know, we got the Hoppington color guy and we got the play-by-play -play guy from Medway. And, um, you know, I don't want to ask you who you're rooting for, but, uh, you know, hey, it's probably tough it's, for you. It's, uh, it's been the best of both worlds right yeah. now, a close game. I'm not gonna I'll, I'll, I'll take a result like last night if we can, if we can get it. There you go. Well, that's good. That's the right answer on the, on the Hoppington <laughs> Uh, station, so. <laughs> got to so, be careful. We yeah. Got a, yeah, we got a good game, nevertheless, no matter who wins, and both playing, both both teams playing the hearts out. We're yeah, fighting for their tournament lives, so to speak. Again, we said Hopkinton 6-6 six and six overall coming into this one. Medway 5-6. and six. Need 10 wins to get into the postseason, so this win instrumental in either team's quest toward that end. A little more desperation for Medway as they're, they, they could fall to five and seven, which is a tough place tough to be. Tough to recover from, right. Ooh. McKenzie dribbling a bit too much, but pass stolen away. Oh. And then he tripped Brooks, no foul that's, called somehow. That's I don't know how that was not a foul on McKenzie. That's, that's really a tough. The Medway parents are livid, and I don't blame them. That right, that that looked like a foul. It wasn't an intentional foul. No, but it, 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 it happened, and yeah. it was a foul, and then Medway does keep the ball. I don't know how that wasn't a foul. So uh, I don't think the uh, Medway coach got a reasonable explanation. But The only reasonable explanation, I think, would be that they missed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think you're right about that. You're right in your analysis there, Tim. <laughs> And it looks like the shot clock there might be an issue there. It didn't reset. Yeah. Now yep. we have a full shot clock, 30 seconds for Medway. 43-38 lead for Hopkinton, 440 left in the fourth quarter. Pass Ooh, to nice, Plunkett. Nice tipped. recovery. Pass over to Ooh, Brooks. Almost a walk. Now back to Plunkett. A lot of passing, too much almost for Medway. Three is oh. short. Ball lands in Brooks' lap, but he can't handle it. Rolls out of bounds. Lucky break there for Hopkins. Yeah, very lucky because Brooks had a wide open bunny if he just caught the ball, but I don't think he was expecting it to be an air ball. Kester goes the whole way. His lefty layup too strong. Wow, Deloya nice grabs a board. Another lucky break for Hopkinton is Kester. Had a bit of a lane, probably shouldn't have taken that shot, pulled it back out, but they get the ball back anyway. Oh. So Taloya drives, almost put in like a headlock and a foul call. It's like a WWF move on <laughs> number 11 there. TJ Nelson, captain guard, he's a senior guard. Kind of a stocky kid, could be in Another football player, but that was, that was a football move for sure in that play. <laughs> and he's got at least three fouls. He's coming out. Inbounds pass into Kelly. Four minutes and counting left here in the fourth. 43-38 lead for Hopkinton. In a bit of a scoring lull right now. 
McKenzie looking to change that, drives, layup no good. Rebound for Medway. Plunkett drives. Gets the call, can't finish the shot, two free throws coming for Plunkett. Well, I wouldn't say it's exactly a comfortable five point lead at all. You know, any kind of a one or two basket run by either team, you know, uh, and at this, in this case, uh, Drew Plunkett, the captain, at the line for two. Uh, Medway really could use these free throws. He hits the first one. Yep, now just a four point lead for Hopkinton. Got a box out here. Second one is good as well. Those are huge free throws for Medway. Only have th 13 points this whole half with 328 left in the game for Medway. Almost a travel. Oh, it was a travel. And a travel was called. Referee watching his feet like a hawk. Hambersoni slipped just a bit. Hit with the traveling violation. And a big break there for Medway. And Brooks threw it to himself. Lost the ball, realized he didn't want to make that pass and tried to collect it and pass it again. Unusual play, you don't see that too often. It, I think he went to bring it up. He pat, Once he lost possession, he sort of, like you said, that's, that's a, hard to, I, I can see what that happened. They, they say he passed it to himself. Right. I don't think he can do and that. The, the coaches, um, the referee explained it to him and the Medway coaches nodded their heads and accepted it. I mean, not much they can really do about it, but they did seem satisfied with the call. Yeah, it's just an unusual call. You don't see that too often. A lot, a lot of discussion going on between the referees and the coaches right here as Coach Keene kind of kicked that ball away at the ref. I'm sure he wasn't too pleased about that. But, um, you know, it's, a, it's pretty much a thankless job being a referee. We were up here, we chided them a lot, but it, it's a very, very tough job to do, especially as I, I say a lot up here, without the benefit of instant replay, that there's some things you just can't see and you can't be in multiple places at once. It's a hard, it's a hard job. I, I mean, I can only speak from a little experience. When I was in, in college, UMass Amherst, I used to referee the intramural games yep. up there, which were very intense. Oh, yeah. And some Kids want to win, that's for sure. They want to win, <laughs> and some of those players are pretty big dudes. And, and um, you know, you, do, you, do, you make the best uh, decision you can in a split second, and sometimes mm -hmm. you, you like to have a couple of them back. But, uh, you know, these guys are doing their best. Uh, right tonight and all the time, so we, we don't mean to be too hard on them, but we're just calling them as we see them. Right. If we question something, we're just giving our opinions. And we're keeping it clean for the most part, so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so after the lengthy discussions, Hopkinton will inbound. 318 left here in the fourth. 43-40 advantage for the Hillers. Puvacad with it now. Jim has quieted down. Yeah, oh, hear a pin drop <laughs> eerie here. quiet over the last five seconds. Ball inside to Kelly. Looked like he should have just went up with it. McKenzie oh. fires the three instead. Unselfish. No thank you, sir, on the two. I'll take three. 46-40 lead now for Hopkinton. Almost a three-second right there. He's still in the lane. Assad charges right in to Hopkinton defender. Amber Sony taking a shoulder to the chest. Offensive foul. Wow, I took one for the team on that one. McKenzie looking for help, finds Kelly. And again, they have that press break where Kelly just mar uh, charges in to catch the ball, and it's almost like a hook and ladder type play where a guard will kind of spring off him and take that ball, and it's been working great for Hopkinton. Breaking the press. Yeah, Kelly's a really strong player physically, creates space for himself. He's very versatile. They use him in a lot of different ways. And he's shown that tonight. Now down oh. low, he got slapped. Sounded like no foul called. Maybe it was the ball. He didn't seem too concerned. Medway takes over. Six point lead for the Hillers, just over two minutes left. Medway needs a hoop. The last minute for Medway has kind of gone by. No points scored, but now down low, wide open. Jack Hadigan with the bucket, a huge bucket. 
And then Johnston seals it and tries to save it with a crazy nice effort. Couldn't get it, though. Yep, play, Medway playing with a little desperation right now. There's plenty of time. It's for only a four-point lead, so I think we're going to have one of these crazy finishes again. McKenzie looking for help, does find it. Medway backing off a bit from the press. Under two minutes now. Oh, yeah. Air shot. somehow lost his balance in the middle of the year. Somehow managed to get that shot to fall. That was a huge, huge bucket. Don't know how he got that shot Nelson off. Nelson fires a quick three. That's short. Amber Sony with the rebound. On the clock. This could be a big possession here for Hopkinton. A bucket here will do wonders for their efforts to win this one. Instead, McKenzie draws a foul. Assad picks up another one. I believe that's his fourth. I think so. And, you know, given the circumstances for, for – that might be his fifth. Yeah. Coach Bliss holding up – not, I don't think he's giving anyone a high five. That's not a high five move, I don't think. <laughs> I think it's a, you got five, buddy. <laughs> but, uh, but if you're Medway and you're down by six with a minute 20 left, uh, that foul puts uh, the Hillers on the line for one and one, and I, I think that's probably a good strategy for Medway to keep the clock from moving too quickly. And uh, now it's, the Hillers can take advantage of the situation and hit their free throws if it'll be lights out. And McKenzie. Doing his part, makes the first. Hopkinton with a seven point lead. Big Second one good, and a timeout for Coach Key. 50 to 42 lead, 120 left. Well, we don't have the exact, exact statistics, but I can tell you just from the, the general feel of the second half, the Hillers are hitting their free throws. Right. Significantly uh, better, Medway too, but um, Looking at the score, it was 27-24 at the half. And the Hillers have shut down, you know, Medway in the second half, playing some tough D, and, and the Hillers are hitting their free throw. So eight-point lead, feeling pretty good. But, you know, you never know what can happen. I think if, if Medway uh, continues with their strategy to maybe get some fouls and get the Hillers to the line, and... Um, pretty critical juncture right now, but I think the, Hill the Hillers are in well positioned to pull this one out. Right, absolutely. Not to mention the eight-point lead, but you also talked about their, for the rest of the game, they're going to be shooting free throws whenever they get fouled. That will be extremely helpful. And you also mentioned about uh, in the second half, well, in the third quarter, there weren't that many uh, fouls, but particularly the fourth quarter, uh, they've been much, much better from the stripe, and that has uh, been kind of instrumental in opening up this eight-point lead. We'll see what they can do over the last minute 20. Plunkett takes it all the way, looking for Almost help. Walk. Nelson fires up the tough shot. Amber Ooh. Sony comes in, really probably could have been called for a foul. Wow, absolutely. Came in hard over Hadigan. The Medway parents and the Medway coaches are just beside themselves. That was unfortunate for them. That was. We'll take a foul on the hill. A little reckless from Ambersoni. Whoa. Now this time he gets in front of the pass. Plunkett probably could have been called for a foul that time. Floater comes from Bryson Burke. No good. And a rebound for McKenzie. Two more free, or at least one more free throw coming. Jack Hadigan, number 12. Uh, pretty big, pretty big player, six foot three. They're, they're playing with some desperation. He's coming out of the game right now. A little frustration there on his part. But, you know, Medway, they're, they're kind of coming in here reeling. Like you said, they lost three in a row, and they really needed this game. And uh, they had the Hillers at the half. But Hillers, ha they have their moment momentum going. They've won four in a row now, right? If they've, All right, this, or this will be the this fourth. This would be the fourth yes. game in, in a row if they hold on, which is with a nine-point lead with a minute left is looking pretty good. Brandon Kelly gets in there for the offensive board. Amber Sony tries to save it, stepped out of bounds. And the ball goes to Medway. Just Med under a minute. Yep, a minute left. Hot Medway down nine. Nelson. Tough shot. The quick shot, no good. Rebound. Baseline shot, no good as well. Ooh. And Szyzycki. 
Looks like he was called for the foul. 45 seconds remaining. Medway will inbound under the Hiller hoop. Yep, Zach came kind of flying over the back, but at this point he's just playing aggressively trying to finish out the game here. Going to need to launch one. Brooks, the three, no good. Grabbed by Ambersoni, and that might do it here. This Medway is pretty much all but giving up. And a foul coming with 28 seconds left on the game clock. Nice uh, second half of the Hillers to extend the lead into double digits potentially here with Brendan on the line for a one and one, I believe. He makes the first. Another huge game for Brendan Kelly. Instrumental offensively, defensively, and just in general for the press break for Hopkinson. Yeah, he's a big player. He's, he doesn't have like you know he's not a six foot five player, but he, with all his his size, he's just a he's a kind of a strong, bulky yeah, kid. Yeah, he uses very his agile. body very well for sure. And he plays bigger than he is. Ooh, nice Three shot. Three from Regan is good. And a timeout from Medway. Fifty three to forty five. Still a big mountain to climb. Eight points. I don't know how he can get eight points in 19 seconds. But uh, to Medway's credit, they're just playing it out. Right. And uh, Hillers just need to not foul and keep their composure, and they'll be on the right side of the uh, 500. They'll be seven and six with this uh, victory tonight. Right. And uh, you, you know who they're playing next game? Uh, yes, actually, uh, it's going to be here in Hopkinton. They will be hosting Norton on Friday at 630. So a chance to go for five in a row there for the Hillers in a big swing because uh, before, before this winning streak, they were three and six, really uh, probably down in the dumps, not, not feeling too positive about the season, but then they rip off this three-game winning streak, now have a chance to go above 500, beating a talented Medway team that's uh, dealing with some struggles of their own. But definitely a, a mid-season swing here for the Hiller boys. Yeah, it's been a... Great team effort, a home run ball. Uh-oh. Wow. <laughs> That's a tough play, man. <laughs> and Kelly somehow gets the layup up and in. He had no wow. other choice but to shoot it. And he got the bucket. And Nelson fires the three. That's short. Tipped. Nelson fires another three. Too far, and that'll do it. As Kelly dribbles out the final seconds. And Hopkinton takes a nice victory, really a tough, tough win over Medway, 55-45, as they improved to seven and six overall, five and four in the TVL, winners of four in a row. Yeah, the, you know, the Medway uh, Mustangs, they um, they got 18 points in the second half, not a good showing in the second half for them, right. and the Hillers hit their foul shots in the second half at a good pace, and uh, great, great win for the Hillers, and they'll be ready to go on Friday night against Norton. All right, we want to just thank our crew one more time. Directing Tom Dings on graphics, Samantha Dings, cameras John Ritz, Mary Arnott, and Mike Terosian. And again, we want to thank the band for coming in, volunteering, and helping us get through this night as well. So for Steve Spector, I am Tim Haladic. We want to thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you here again on Friday against Norton.